Here are 10 of my most frequently asked questions all about scalp care. You know, questions like, how do I really know if I have an oily scalp or a dry scalp? How do I know if my flakes are dandruff, dry scalp, or seborrheic dermatitis? What shampoos am I supposed to use for my dry or oily scalp? How often am I supposed to use these shampoos? All these types of questions are going to be answered in today's video. What's good everybody and welcome scalp to the shit. Did I just say scalp? Can you tell there's only one thing on my mind? And do you remember when I said that scalp care is going to be a trend this year? Scalp care is definitely one of the hottest trends that we can expect to see from 2021 and hopefully infinity. Well, scalp care is not just gonna be a trend this year. Scalp care is a lifestyle. It is also the most important part of a healthy hair routine that is very often mistreated. And that's just something we can't have. That's something that I can't see. Now, who am I, you may ask? Hi, I am a healthy scalp advocate, a curly hair enthusiast, a pro hair stylist, and your main girl now. And I am here for you. So without further ado, let's get into your questions all about scalp care, shall we? So first things first, starting off strong with the most important question to get started. How do you know if you have a dry scalp or an oily scalp? Or hey just a normal scalp. There are some very evident signs that will tell you if you have a dry scalp and hair or an oily scalp and hair. And I say end hair because your scalp type will often extend into what kind of hair you have. It's because your hair grows from your scalp. Not to say that you can't have extra dry hair with a very oily scalp, but I digress. To keep things simple, an oily scalp can be characterized and identified by having a greasy scalp and oily buildup and film over your scalp and hair. Not to be mistaken by a scalp that just hasn't had a good shampoo and is built up with a ton of product. That's build up, that's a whole different scenario, that's a whole different video topic. An oily scalp will often look very shiny. You know, kind of like a bowling ball effect. You know the, you know the, you know the, the freshly oiled bowling ball. That's your head, just with hair. And while it can specifically be caused by maybe applying too much oil and too much product near your scalp and improper shampooing, truly an oily scalp comes from overactive sebaceous glands that lay in your skin. Remember, scalp is skin and it's also an extension of our face. I mean, it's different. It's got a ton of hair follicles, but if you have a very oily skin and face, you are likely to have an oily scalp and hair as well. Now on the other hand, a dry scalp is gonna be quite the contraire and very different. Your skin is gonna look much more dull and, and you may have very dry hair as well that is very brittle and not the strongest and most luscious growing out of your scalp because of underactive sebaceous glands. Your skin is not naturally producing enough sebum and this can be caused from overly shampooing maybe using shampoos that are a little too harsh and even from the climate that you're in if you're in a very dry climate this can aggravate and cause a dry scalp but most likely it's being caused by underactive sebaceous glands and simply put a lack of natural oils so those are two very different extremes and if you feel like you're somewhere in the middle you've got characteristics of both well that's perfectly normal too in fact you probably have a normal scalp that can sometimes become more dry and it can sometimes produce more oils. Your scalp needs can change and that's why it's really important to make sure that you're treating your scalp accordingly for each and every wash day. Now on that note, on to our next very important question. So cue number two, how do I know how to choose the right shampoo for my scalp type? This is such a common question that I get and it'd be easier to answer what shampoos are going to be wrong for your scalp. If you have an oily scalp, you do not need any more moisturization in your scalp. You've got more than enough of your natural sebum, so stay away from anything that says moisturizing because it's just gonna add extra weight and be really heavy on your hair. So absolutely no more moisturizing at your scalp. And this actually gets a little bit more serious because the problem with adding more oils to your scalp that is already naturally oily is it starts to create some other problems like dandruff and seborrheic dermatitis, fungal issues. We're gonna get more into that, stay tuned. And try to stay in tune with your scalp and be gentle with your skin. You know, you don't wanna start overly washing, overly stripping your hair of its natural oils. The right shampoo for you will remove any of the excess oils without making your scalp and hair feel dry. We call these shampoos balancing shampoos. And one of the key things you wanna look for on really any shampoo is a pH balance. The pH or fur 
of your shampoo should be between 4.5 to 5.5 because that matches the skin and this way it's not going to be irritating your skin which can increase the oil production and cause other kinds of problems. But because a dry scalp doesn't have all those natural oils, the wrong shampoo is going to be anything that is too cleansing, too stripping, too drying and this could be shampoos that have sulfates or that have alcohols. These are ingredients that you may want to avoid if you have a dry scalp and focus on replenishing what it needs and I think you know where I'm going with this. The right shampoo is going to be one that is conditioning and moisturizing because they're going to contain ingredients that are going to help to soften and soothe the scalp while also moisturizing and making the hair more manageable. Now moving on to question number three, the answer to this question is going to be very unique to you and the question is how many times a week should I wash my hair? This is where I do not want you to compare your wash day to anybody else's. I don't want to hear any more racing and bragging about how long you can go without washing your hair because not everyone can do that. Especially not if your scalp isn't balanced. Remember, the products that you are using on your skin, your scalp, should be pH balanced, full balanced, between 4.5 to 5.5. And therefore, if they are, you can wash your hair every day. Now, am I advising you to wash your hair every day? If you absolutely need to, then yes. For example, one of the best ways to manage an oily scalp with overactive sebaceous glands is to cleanse it. As long as you're using a shampoo that's not stripping and drying your hair out, washing your hair every day can be a very healthy practice in order to get those excess oils off your scalp and to avoid further problems. Now there may be ways around this with magical things called dry shampoos that do not require any water because their main purpose is to absorb any excess oils. And with appropriate use and not over abuse, I am all for dry shampoos as long as it's going to avoid you having to re-wet and re-wash and restyle your hair and wet it and dry it and wet it and dry it, which can cause stress on your strands even more. Again, remember, water is the enemy. It's not your shampoo. If you can avoid using water every day, I'm all for dry shampoo. You use it as needed and then wash it thoroughly. And yes, that goes for a dry scalp as well. You don't want to overly wash your hair, not just to avoid the stress on your strands, but because the quality of your water can exasperate any dry skin conditions. For example, like eczema or eczema. Eczema, eczema, whatever you uh, want to call it. If you've got eczema and really dry patches on your scalp, this could be caused from your water. So avoiding overly washing and making sure that you are using those moisturizing shampoos and even cleansing conditioners, co-washes, very, very gentle, gentle cleansers. You may notice you won't have to wash your hair as frequently. I hope that answers your questions on frequency, even though I didn't give you an exact number of how often to wash your hair. The point is, there's not one answer. It's not as simple as wash and dry, cut and dry, wash and dry, same biz. You know what I meant. And as long as you are using those shampoos that are catered to your scalp needs, you'll notice that you may not have to wash your hair as frequently. Now, what does this mean for question number four, you ask? Oh, question number four. The question is, can you train your scalp? Scalp training is a process that involves stretching out your wash days, reducing the amount of times that you're shampooing, and in general, the end goal is to make your hair stop producing as many oils as it is producing, so you don't have to become so dependent on your shampoos. That's the gist of scalp training. Now, am I gonna sit here and say that scalp training is a myth? Well, mm, I'm not gonna say that I necessarily believe in it. But hear me out because my issue is the false sense of hope that it gives to people when it's really not a method that's going to work for everyone. Not everyone can get away with not shampooing. I mean, sure, if you're using the wrong shampoo for your scalp, you are using something that's too stripping, you're using something that's too moisturizing, something that's not properly and effectively cleansing your scalp to your hair's needs, it's not going to be balanced and it's gonna be out of whack. And that's why you may be experiencing extra oil production. And so if you throw all of those away and start scalp training, the idea is that your scalp will go through a detox period and it can take several months to retrain your scalp back to being balanced. And people will do all of that just to suffer through endless bad hair days and potentially make things worse in between while doing some bad DIYs. All to discover in the end, honestly, it's really just a waste of time. If your scalp, your skin, 
is naturally oily. There's nothing you can really do to slow down those overactive sebaceous glands. In fact, be happy because it's a good sign that you have healthy skin. As long as you're using the right shampoo, there's really no need to scalp train it. In fact, please do not try this at home if you have an oily scalp, especially if you have dandruff. It'll only get worse. You need to remove that oil. And speaking of dandruff, now that we're on the topic, let's talk about those flakes with question number five. Question number five. Question? It's a cue, everybody. Question number five. I shall present you with a case study for this question. One of you lovely submitted this saying, I think I have a dry scalp, but throughout the week I work out and my scalp gets so oily and my flakes turn yellow. Do I have a dry scalp or is it dandruff? So if we evaluate the situation, you gave us some very key information. Your scalp gets very oily and your flakes are yellowish. Large yellowish flakes, whether they're dispersed throughout your scalp or they come in patches along your scalp, is in fact dandruff. Or if you want to get technical, you have pityriasis. That's just the technical term for dandruff, which is caused by an excessive accumulation of dead skin cells paired with good old overactive sebaceous glands, which fuels a naturally occurring fungus on the scalp called malasnesia. Bless you. Malasnesia. No sneeze. Malasnesia is completely normal. It's on everyone's scalp, but it can get out of control if we are not controlling it by using the right shampoos and removing that excess oil that feeds into it and is causing the dandruff. So as this person said, they're working out throughout the week and then their scalp is starting to get very oily and then they're noticing the dandruff. The best way to avoid that from happening is to wash your scalp before it happens. And to answer the first part of that question, I wouldn't consider the scalp to be dry. It may be dehydrated and the shampoo that is being used may be overly drying and stripping it of its natural oils, which is causing it to feel dry on the first couple days, but then overly oily on the next few days. And it really just sounds like you're in this vicious cycle that needs to find the right balance and balancing shampoo. Now we know how to identify dandruff, but what's the difference between dry scalp flakes and another scalp condition called seborrheic dermatitis? This is a big question, so I want to clear it up. And I want to start by saying dry scalp and the flakes associated with dry scalp are very often caused by a lack of exfoliation because, and I'm speaking from personal experience, and I'm speaking as a curl specialist, many people with a dry scalp also tend to have dry curly hair that they do not brush on a daily basis. So a lot of the flakes that they're seeing is just dead skin cells that doesn't get exfoliated manually. And what's happening is when you're not daily exfoliating your scalp, those flakes can kind of build up and get stuck and trapped in your hair and then you see them. It's nothing serious. I mean, the flakes can definitely get annoying. I know that. But if all you're seeing is small, dry, little white flakes, it's nothing really to be afraid of. Unless you're noticing this in patches, Patches that look like this, very red, very irritated, dry looking and just flaky looking skin. This is called seborrheic dermatitis, which can appear as dry scalp, but really is much more serious. It is a condition that is caused by the inflammation of your sebaceous glands. Now this can happen on a dry scalp or an oily scalp. The flakes associated can be dry or they can be flaky, but they will also be characterized by redness, itching, and crusting in the area that doesn't just appear on the scalp. Seborrheic dermatitis can also happen on the face, in between the eyebrows, the beard area, along the hairline. Because this is an inflammatory response, you want to be careful with what you're putting on it and definitely seek professional help. But hey, if your flakes are kind of scattered all over the place and they're just very small, white, and nothing but a little bit annoying, then they're probably just a dry scalp. Which leads us to our next question. Dry scalp, I got you. So question number seven, why, am I, why did I ever start doing this? Question number seven, how to help a dry scalp in between your washes? Listen, I only advise you use this tip if you have dry skin and scalp, but you can apply an oil blend just on your fingertips and gently massage just a small amount into your scalp as this is going to help to lubricate the scalp area and just provide the oils that your scalp isn't naturally providing. Only do this in between washes as needed if your scalp feels tight. And another option for you is on the night before your wash, do a little hot oil treatment, apply an oil to your scalp and your ends, really let it just soak into your scalp and hair. And it's gonna help to give a little layer of protection and lubrication before you go in and start shampooing. But honestly, as someone with a dry scalp, especially in dry weather conditions, <clears throat> 
winter, the best thing for you to do for your dry scalp is to maybe give a little exfoliation when you need it and condition your scalp. Do a little scalp mask and don't be afraid to leave in products on your scalp. Any products and serums that are made to be left on the scalp because these are going to help to protect your scalp throughout the week so you don't have to resort to other options. And if you're noticing that your dry scalp is being caused by the weather then I do definitely recommend that you protect your scalp so it's not being exposed to the cold dry air. Now the next question is another question regarding kind of in between washes and I get asked this all the time. So question number eight, someone was asking me, how do I feel about using a co-wash instead of a separate shampoo and conditioner? So a co-wash is a cleansing conditioner. It's more of a conditioner with maybe a few cleansing ingredients in it. And for example, someone with dry scalp and hair that needs to wash their hair more frequently, maybe because they work out or their hair just got kind of dirty on their ends, but you know, they don't need any kind of deep cleanse. And only if their hair isn't too dry, they may be able to get away with just using a one and done, a two in one co-wash situation. However, I could never. <laughs> I definitely need a separate shampoo and conditioner anytime I've used the co-wash. I've always had to condition afterwards. But this goes back to analyzing your hair's needs and kind of determining what it needs that day. If you use a co-wash and you don't think your hair feels very dry afterwards, maybe you don't need to use a regular condition afterwards. But that being said, I don't recommend co-washes for regular use, even for a dry scalp. Every once in a while, every so often, every few washes, once or twice a month approximately, you still need to kind of give a clarifying shampoo just to make sure you're removing all product buildup from your hair because that's a whole nother situation that again, we will address. We'll address that in another video. It's a, it's a product buildup. It's too much. It's too much for this video. <laughs> Let's move on to our final two questions. Q number nine. This question perfectly follows up what I just said. The question is, if my scalp feels irritated and is tender, oh, is that a sign that I need to clarify my hair? So based on what this person is asking, a clarifying shampoo is not just a stripping shampoo and not all clarifying shampoos are true clarifying shampoos, meaning they don't all have chelating ingredients, which are the key ingredients to help remove mineral buildup such as iron, copper, chlorine, minerals that are in our water that can build up on our scalp and hair and create problems such as eczema or just become really irritating to our scalp in general. So my answer to this is yes, but my answer to almost everything is yes, you should clarify. Clarifying your hair using a nice chelating shampoo is hitting the reset button. It is going to remove anything that is being built up on your hair and it is the best way to start fresh. And that also kind of answers question number 10. Do you have any tips on how to prevent or get rid of scalp pain and tenderness? My best tip is to get to the root of the problem. Scalp tenderness and scalp pain can be caused by a lot of different things. It could be what's in your water. It could be from product buildup. It could be from eczema. It could be from dandruff, seborrheic dermatitis. It could be from a lot of different things that can be solved by the right cleansing. But cleansing isn't always the only solution because another thing that causes a tender scalp is stress. Your hairstyle, why well, I don't usually wear tight styles ever. I only do cute styles like this occasionally to show off my healthy scalp, of course. But finally, it can also be caused by allergic contact dermatitis. So maybe there's an irritation and a reaction happening on your scalp from a possible irritant or ingredient that is in your products. So if it's really painful, the best way to get to the root of this is to see a professional, see a dermatologist. They are a skin doctor. They will be able to analyze your hair and skin. You can also see a trichologist. And when you do all that, you should be on your healthy scalp way. Wow, okay, that has been 10 questions. I don't know how long of a video, but lots of information. And I hope you found this video very helpful. If you're interested in seeing some scalp care routines, some how-to shampoo tutorials, and some of the products that I use and recommend, I recommend you checking out my scalp care playlist. I will link that playlist for you in the description box below so you can check it out there. If you haven't already, then please subscribe to this channel and thank you for being here with me. This has been your main girl Mel, and I am out. Peace. Or if you want to get technical, you have pity, pity rises. Pity rises, pity rises, pity, pity, pity patter, pity. I pity you for the rises. This is called seborrheic dermatitis. Se seborrheic, seborrheic. 
I'll wait. Excellent. This construction is killing me, but also I'm excited to show you what it looks like when it's done. I need it to be done. Q10. Q10. QT. QT. Yeah, we did it. We did it. We did it. Hooray. I'm barely sweating this time. It's amazing. It's amazing. Some people have scalp problems. I have a sweat problem. Nobody's perfect, but we're still worth it. That's what Hannah Montana would say. Hey, Miley, call me. Hey, these are new candles. Candles. I forgot it was a fake flame. Amanda. She forgot to take the plastic off of the things. They're really cute, though. The purple vibes here are immaculate. No. Oh, I forgot about my tea. Oh, it's still warm. I think it was okay. Am I a bit much? Am I too much? If the answer is yes, don't answer that, okay? I can't help being the way that I am. Shh. Did anyone notice my pimple patch? I don't know how visible that is on camera. I know that my makeup didn't really cover it all that well, but I also know that it is better than putting makeup on an open wound. And if you made it to the end of this video, I just wanna, I'm not punching you, I just wanna give a little dab. Props, props to you. You are my boo. And that is my rhyme. For you, how many times did I rhyme in this video? I don't know. Uh, if you want to go back and watch it and let me know, that'd be that'd be really cool.